Welcome to Measure Theory Class 4 on Measurable Functions. So far, we've talked about functions, sigma algebras, measurable spaces, measures, measure spaces, and now we're adding a fourth item, measurable functions. So what makes a function a measurable function? Let's say we have two measurable spaces. In one measurable space, you have the original domain S with its sigma algebra A. In the other measurable space, you have another original domain T with its sigma algebra F. And we have a function, F. The domain for function F is S, and the range for function F is T. So the original domain for one measurable space serves as the domain for f, and the original domain for a second measurable space serves as the range for f. We're halfway there to making this a measurable function. f will be a measurable function if the sigma algebra for its range, which is f, is the domain for another function g, and the sigma algebra for its domain, which is a, is the range for, its, for another function g. But it is not merely that the function g has as its domain the sigma algebra of the range of function f, and it is not merely that function g has as its range the sigma algebra of the domain of function f. Rather, it is because the assignment of values in, the, in function g's range to the elements in its domain are based upon the assignment of values in function f's range to elements in its domain. That's what makes this whole thing a measurable function. Let's do an example. On the left, we have the um, measurable space S A. S is the original domain, A is the sigma algebra. On the right, we have the measurable space T F. T is the original domain, F is the sigma algebra. F is the measurable function if it is a function from S to T. Little a maps to big A, little b maps to big B, and little c maps to big C. But f is not a measurable function yet. Right now, it's just a function. But now notice that each of the elements in the sigma algebra f can map to an element in the sigma algebra a. For example, capital B C maps to little b C. And I'm just doing this one mapping to keep the slide from getting too cluttered. Now, now f is a measurable function. And this time I will name this sort of inverse set function. I'll give it the name f inverse. So essentially, f inverse takes subsets of the range for f as its argument and returns subsets of the domain for f. And now, just to point out, a measurable function is not necessarily a set of objects, objects mapping to another set of objects. Often, t is the real line, and f is the sigma algebra of the real line. All right, now remember, it is not merely that the inverse function has as its domain the sigma algebra of the range of function f, and it's not merely that the inverse function has as its range the sigma algebra of the domain of function f, but it is because the set little b, little c in the inverse function's range maps to the set capital B, capital C in the inverse function's domain based on or because of the set capital B and the set capital C in the functions range mapping to the set little b and the set little c in the functions domain. Let's look at a more specific example. Let's say 
S is a set of four people, A, B, C, and D. These are patients at the Acne and Boils um, Dermatology Clinic. And T is a set of health conditions that they treat at this clinic. They treat people with acne, they treat people with boils, and they treat people with both acne and boils. F is a function from the domain S to the range T. It maps the patients to the conditions they were treated for. D was treated for acne, A and C were treated for boils, and B was treated for both acne and boils. So now we want to think about the sigma algebras. A is a sigma algebra of S, the sigma algebra of the patients. It is a sigma algebra of S formed from a set containing patient B. F is the sigma algebra of T, the sigma algebra of conditions. It is a sigma algebra of T formed from the set containing the condition of having both acne and boils. And you can pause and check for yourself that these are correctly generated sigma algebras based on these specifications. Is F a measurable function? Let's see. F inverse, the inverse set function, maps every element in F to one element in A. So yes, F is a measurable function. If you remember from class one, uh, for a function to be a function, the every single element in the domain must map to one and only one element in the range. And that's what we have here. So f is a measurable function. And you can check this, see the condition both acne and boils maps to b, and that's correct. The condition acne and the condition boils. Acne belongs to d and Boils belongs to C and A, so here you have D, C, and A, so they all map. They have somewhere to go. So let's do another example. In this case, the sigma algebras are formed from a different starting point. So this sigma algebra is generated starting with the set B and set C. Sigma algebra F is generated starting with the set acne. And as you can see, not every element in F maps to an element in F. So in this case, F is not a measurable function, and we can check that. So the set acne maps to D. So there, in the sigma algebra A, there is no set that contains just the set D. So this um, set has nowhere to go. Same with this set. Um, the set boils and set acne and boils. We had boils, maps to A and C, and acne and boils B. So you would have to look for a set containing the set A, B, and C, and there is none here. So in this case, F is not a measurable function. And here is an example of sigma algebras that are power sets and here every element of f does map to an element in a so this is a measurable function so far we have applied the measurable function to measurable spaces but how does it apply to a measure space here mu is the measure for one measure space and mu star is the measure for another measure space the measure mu star assigns to each set in the sigma algebra f the exact same number that mu assigns to the corresponding set in sigma algebra a. So how will mu star know where to find the set in the sigma algebra a that is the corresponding set to a set in the sigma algebra f? It will find it because it is mapped to by the inverse function. All right. Let's do an example. For example, mu equals the number of patients in each set in the sigma algebra A. 
So what is mu equal to for these sets? For this set, it's 1, mu equals 3, mu equals 2, mu equals 4, and by definition for the empty set, mu equals 0. Then mu star is a measure that also assigns to sets the number of patients in each set. But in this case, mu star assigns this number to a set in the sigma algebra set F which is the sigma algebra of the conditions. It assigns to this set the number that mu assigns to the corresponding set in A. That corresponding set is the set that the inverse set function maps from F to A. So let's continue with the Acme and Boyle's dermatology example. I will give you sets from the sigma algebra of the conditions, so we can use this. What does mu star equal in these sets? For the set containing boils, this maps to the set containing patients A and C. So the count for that is 2. That is the measure for that set. So mu star for boils equals 2. For the set containing the set acne and boils, mu star equals 1. Acne and boils, patient B, just 1. For the set containing the set acne and the set boils, mu star equals 3. For the set containing the set acne and the set acne and boils, mu star equals 2. For the set containing the set boils and the set acne and boils, mu star equals 3. So you can pause this video and check these out. For example, acne and boils. Acne is D, it's 1, boils, two, three. Continuing with the Acme and Boyle's dermatology, we can use a completely different measure. Say mu is the amount of payment they receive for each patient. So what does the measure equal for each of these sets in the power set? Let's use the um, amount of reimbursement they get for each patient. For the set A and the set C, it's $90. You add 35 and 55 and you get 90. For the set B and set D, $260. For all four patients, $350 and by definition, the empty set is zero. So now, let's look at what mu star equals. What does mu star assign to the um, sets in the sigma algebra F, which is the sigma algebra of the conditions? You can use these bits of information. And mu star assigns to the set boils $90. So boils, so C and A, it's 35 and 55, it's 90 dollars. Acne and boils, the condition of having both acne and boils, is to patient B, patient B is 175 dollars. So the set acne and the set boils, set acne, it's D, set boils. A and C, so A plus C plus D is 175. The set acne and the set acne and boils. Acne is D, acne and boils is B, so you add 175 and 85. And the set boils and the set acne and boils Boils, you have A and C, acne and boils is B, so A, B, C, 
So you add 35, 175, and 55. So, so far we have reviewed functions, sigma algebras, measurable spaces, measures, measure spaces, and measurable functions. Next we'll go into probability theory and probability spaces. And we're going to discuss how they fit into applied research with respect to the data generating process. Thank you very much for watching this video.